my name is Becky. And we are the Sorry Girls. And for those of you who don't know, I am getting married this August. So excited. There's lots of stuff on the vlog channel to fill you in. There's a vlog about when I got engaged. Yeah. Which is so, so fun. Um, but a lot of you were asking about wedding DIYs and if I could do them. So obviously wedding DIYs are kind of personal, but I just want to show you what I'm doing to give you some inspiration. Mm -hmm. So today we're doing wedding invitations, but these are just invitations that you could do for anything. Yeah, yeah. And the other DIYs that we have planned for this, again, could just be like decor or like party yes, stuff. Yes, so. party DIY stuff. Yeah. Or wedding if you're getting married too. Yes! So stay tuned because there's going to be more in this sort of series as well. And also check out the vlog channel for more updates on wedding stuff too. Before we jump into it, are you subscribed? <laughs> because you should be, seriously. We have so much fun on this channel and we take your ideas all the time. Like this one, everyone was like, wedding DIYs, wedding DIYs. And I was like, okay. Okay, we'll okay. do it. <laughs> all right, enjoy the video guys. Okay, so I wanted to bring you guys on a little adventure with me because I wasn't sure exactly how they were going to turn out. I didn't know what I wanted until I went to the craft store and figured it out. Since it's nearly spring, they had so many amazing floral options, I did not know what to do. So here are my three options I ended up choosing from. I ended up going with the dried eucalyptus because it was actually a real plant as opposed to the other two that were fake ones. In the paper aisle, there were so many options as well, but I knew I wanted a textured, thick watercolor paper, so here is the one I ended up going with. So the base of these invitations are made out of watercolor paper because I love the texture of watercolor paper and I know that I want to add a colored effect to the pages. I'm going to be making about 80 invitations and I know that I can fit two per sheet so I need about 40 sheets of watercolor paper. This is 140 pound watercolor paper meaning it's pretty thick. Just know that the thinner the page you go, the easier it will be to print on, but of course you won't have that nice thick paper look if you like that. For the envelopes, I'm just using this brown craft paper envelope. And these are five by seven envelopes. And as you can see, I can fit two on a piece of paper, which is gonna make my life so much easier. It basically cuts the work I have to do in half. For the colored effect, I am using this watercolor palette. This is so cheap. It's from the craft store, but it's one of my favorites because it has such good colors in it, like this taupe, this purple, this blue, this peach. All of these are my favorite colors in the palette. So here's the technique I ended up going with to dye these pages. I start with the taupey brown and I dip it in some water and go around the edges. Then I mix in a little bit of this purple so it's not too brown. And those colors combined make something that looks like this. And because I'm putting two invitations per sheet, I need to go down the middle as well because I'm going to be ripping this in half and I want it to be nicely colored on both sides. Then I'm just using a large dry brush to blend the color together. This makes so that the whole page has a wash of color and there's not really any uh, blank white spots on it. And then I set this out to dry. This is what 40 drying invitation papers look like. So as I leave all of those pages to dry, I'm gonna show you how I actually designed the wedding invitation. So I designed this invitation in Photoshop just because I know it really well, but you can use whatever program you're comfortable with or you have. I'm starting with a page that is 5x7 because that's how big I want the invitation to be, and I'm doing 300 dpi which produces a pretty nice quality for printing. I knew I wanted to do our names in a nice pretty script, so I started with this first. And I'm doing this in one of my favorite fonts, which is Bombshell Pro. For the rest of the text on the information, I'm using the font Georgia. It's a nice serif font, and I'm playing with different versions of that font, such as the regular version, the thin version, the bold version, and I'm messing around with the spacing because I think spaced letters often look a little bit nicer. I played around with having the different titles on the invitation be in bombshell as well, but I ended up thinking it was a bit too fancy and I wanted to keep it specific to our names, so I ended up switching these back to Georgia as well in the end. And just so everyone knows, I'm using fake information for this sample invitation just because privacy reasons, but of course here is where you would put the right information to your event. So to go along with this invitation, I also made a website where people can RSVP. I just think it's a lot cleaner than having people mail you back responses. That way it's in an email and it's really organized for me, but of course you could make RSVP cards as well if you wanted. I think those are super cute. So once I had all my information in, I just played around with different font styles and spacing until I had it exactly how I wanted it to be. Now for getting these printed, I am making a second document that's the size of my watercolor sheets, which is nine by 12, and again, 300 DPI. And then I can bring over everything I made in the original document and place it in the new document so it's spaced nicely. I double this up because I'm printing two per sheet. And lastly, I'm saving this as a TIFF file because that's a really nice file format for printing. And then I can take this file to my printer and have my invitations printed on the watercolor sheets. So I went to Staples and they said that they wouldn't be able to print my text 
onto that paper because they can't put paper in their printers that's not official Staples paper because the stores don't actually own the printers they rent them from like the company and the company won't let them risk random paper messing up their machines which I, I kind of I totally get so when we went to do our DIY business cards video which was done very similarly it was with the watercolor paper um, I just called random printing houses around and found one that would let me bring my own paper uh, so I guess that's what I'm gonna do again hi there I was wondering are you able to print text onto paper that I bring in like my own paper looks good I am gonna go try that place fingers crossed they could do it because then invitations are almost done so once all my custom colored sheets are dry here's what they're looking like and here are the invitations back from the printer. I am so unbelievably happy with how these turned out. Now, of course, you could definitely print these yourself with your own printer, but I just found it was faster, and sometimes the quality is a little bit nicer if you go to a printing house. And I think it only cost me around $10 to get all of this printed. It's super affordable. To cut these invitations, I'm going to be ripping them to give them a nice soft edge. Get a ruler that has a square right angle edge. It's going to make cutting a straight line so much easier. And again, remember my envelope was five by seven, so I need to make sure that I'm ripping these to fit inside the envelope. Make sure you hold the ruler really tight to the paper and rip slowly. This makes a much more softer organic edge than if you were to cut them with a pair of scissors. For some extra detail, I'm using some waxed thread and I'm wrapping it around the invitations a couple of times. So here's the dried eucalyptus I ended up going with and I'm just cutting off small bits for the invitations and then lay them underneath your wax thread to hold them in place. And the great thing about this eucalyptus is that it folds really nicely so it can compact itself into an envelope pretty easily. For writing all my addresses on the envelope, I went with this white gel pen because it shows up really nicely against the brown craft paper. And now all that's left is to put my invitations in the envelopes and mail them out. enjoyed that I am so happy with how they turned out I hope this inspires you if you are having a wedding or you're just doing sort of like an outdoor party thing that you need invites for can't wait to get my invite in the mail Becky oh yeah it's coming <laughs> but again stay subscribed to this channel or subscribe if you're not already um, for more wedding DIYs coming soon yes and uh, just DIYs in general we have lots of those coming it's like spring summer vibes coming up yes right if weddings aren't your thing don't worry there's other not wedding content coming as well and lots of other stuff you can watch because our channel is like super old and we have like lots of DIYs <laughs> there's so much DIYs available for you guys <laughs> all right thank you guys so much for watching this video if you like it make sure that you like it and if you love it make sure you sub it and we'll see you next time bye, bye.